Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to be watching Big Hero 6 to see how accurate the technology and science scenes in the movie really are. Port of San Fran's Tokyo, which is like the ultimate Silicon Valley. I can't think of a more engineering sounding city in my entire life, but I would definitely move there if this is real. Two bots enter, one mod leaves. Fighters ready? That was my first fight. I, can I try again? No one likes a sore loser, little boy. <laughs> Robot competitions happen all the time, except usually when robots are competing against each other, it's to solve puzzles or to score points in a game. Robot fighting competitions are very, very real and they are a lot of fun. How fighting competitions work is that teams of, usually teams of engineers, will get together and then they will create a robot with the specifications given to them by whoever's running the competition. And then they pretty much make robots that are built and designed to destroy other robots. And it's pretty similar, like the, the biggest difference I can say about like what we just saw is that these people are extremely close to the fight. In the robot fighting competitions, you're behind a big layer of safety glass or you're far enough from the robot with enough security to the point where like if shards of glass come flying off or if a flamethrower comes at you, like you are in a safe place to not get injured by that. Is this gonna take long? Relax you big baby, we'll be in and out. Anyway, you've never seen my lab. Oh great, I get to see your nerd lab. <laughs> That is the coolest engineering lab I have ever seen. Labs are where you build, program, and create something, but you almost never test out what you built in the lab that you built it in. So like right now when we just saw that bike, like you, you can build that bike inside of a lab very safely, but you wouldn't test it in that same area. The exceptions to that would be like if it was like a software thing that you're working on. Like if, some, if you're building an app for like an Android device, then yeah, you can just have the phone and that's pretty easy. You can use a mobile device and test it wherever you want to be. But for some things that are actually larger, it's usually like the, the bigger you make it or like if you have to assemble your device or your component, then the lab is where you will assemble it. But testing is not usually done there because it's generally not a safe environment. Electromag suspension? Hey, <laughs> who are you? Uh, I'm... Go, go. This is my brother, Hero. Welcome to the nerd lab. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen electromagnetic suspension on a bike before. Zero resistance, faster bike. But not fast enough. Yet. That, uh, that part is true, actually. If you put maglev on a bike, you have pretty much zero resistance. I mean, at least when it comes to like friction between the tires and like the actual bike itself, but you would still have resistance between um, like the bike and the floor of which you're moving on. Electromagnetic suspension or maglev as it's called is the same technology that's used on the bullet train in Japan, as well as other bullet trains. Uh, now, now they have one in Hong Kong and there's one in Germany and those trains can fly at like 200 miles an hour and the reason they can do that is because they're run on just magnets and they're just levitating off of the train track and just launching them forward. Now because these trains are on a closed track, they can actually go faster than that even if they wanted to and there's really not much risk involved because you can safely slow that train down because everything you're doing is in a controlled area, the train can only move on the train track. This bike, however, is a whole different story because if you are just riding this bike just down a street, you don't want someone to be on their iPhone and their phone just flings the bike. And the tires that she was using are very, very sharp edges. So I, I really don't know where you would ever 
uh, ride this bike where it can be po anywhere applicable. Really cool concept, but it, like you can't use it anywhere that would make sense. Whoa, 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 whoa. do not move. Behind the line, please. Hey, Wasabi, this is my brother, Hero. Hello, Hero, prepare to be amazed. Catch. Wow. Laser-induced plasma? Oh yeah. He has safety glasses, which is probably the first person I've seen wear them in this lab, besides that motorcycle helmet that um, that one girl had on. I'm almost certain that invention actually exists today, but they don't use lasers, they just use like uh, razor blades to cut the fruit up really quickly, and I think it was on Jimmy Kimmel, like one scientist actually showed that. Hello, I am Baymax, your personal healthcare companion. I was alerted to the need for medical attention when you said, Ow. A robotic nurse. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate your pain? Physical or emotional? I will scan you now. Scan complete. You have a slight epidermal abrasion on your forearm. I suggest an antibacterial spray. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's in the spray? Baymax is really, really cool. Software like this is being developed right now. And, and not in the form of like a big marshmallow fluffy robot, but software that can just scan a patient and then immediately tell you like what is going on with them, at least on the surface level. Medical technology has always been really interesting to me. That's part of the reason that I did electrical and biomedical engineering was so I can get more to stuff like this. And from looking at it from a biomedical engineering perspective, it would be much more applicable to have like just a giant machine that can just scan like anyone who goes through it kind of like an MRI like it doesn't matter who goes in an MRI it just it'll scan you and then it'll retrieve those images so Baymax has a really cool software behind him but the actual hardware of like a robot walking around and doing all these like interactions is probably not a good idea because you don't want the hospital to be flooded with a bunch of these guys Coolest thing I've seen in medical technology recently is that there's this guy who developed a laser that all he has to do is like this laser has to touch your skin and then it'll return your heart rate. I have not the slightest clue how that works, but it's really cool. A little more interesting. The microbots are controlled with this neurotransmitter. Think what I want them to do? They do it. The applications for this tech are limitless. Construction. What used to take teams of people working by hand for months or years can now be accomplished by one person. And that's just the beginning. How about this idea of microbots? and um, using like a neural transmitter and controlling things around you like that is a amazing idea. It's extremely difficult to make. So these are not, they're not even close to something like Siri or Alexa because with those programs, they have like a pre-downloaded software that'll understand the commands that you give it. and. There are certain things that you have to take into effect with using like those uh, voice operating, like, I mean, I, I don't know what the classification for Siri is, but I guess it would be like a iPhone assistant, like a Jarvis sort of a thing. But with that is like, it's, it's taking in like everyone speaking English, right? Or it's like, it's using some constants that no matter who's actually talking to it, it'll understand that person. So your speech is something that can be replicated and the, the way that you pronounce a word is very similar to the way that someone else could pronounce that same word. However, the way that you think is almost never even close to the way that somebody else thinks. At least we don't have the technology that has the precision to actually measure that. I believe if this was ever to be possible, only one person could have possibly used it because you have to structure it to be able to think the way that you calibrated it. Like, you can't just put that on someone else's random head and then think that they're gonna use it the same way you do because if that person thinks in a different way than you, it, it, it will be very difficult for the computer to interpret the person's commands and actually execute what it wants them to do. Let's work on your moves.
downloading movements and downloading information like that so that you can just readily access it and makes you an expert in whatever is a very matrix idea. Well, it doesn't really work for humans as much. It can easily work for robots. I don't know if he can do it as easily as he just did right here. I mean, that's some amazing software, whatever he's working with to allow that to happen. But really, I mean, it's just a mechanical computer that is executing exactly what you tell it to do. So if you teach it to do certain movements, it'll do exactly what you taught it to do. Look up Boston Dynamic Robots. Those things are scary, and what they can do is way cooler than just karate moves like this. I wish you could 3D print as fast as they just showed in this movie. It usually even 3D printing like the smallest of objects takes long, long hours. Actually, so, something like right here. Yeah, I mean, I was really bored one day at, and I just decided to make like a 3D printed bunny. But yeah, uh, making this thing, I, I think this took about a day. Guy. Let's just take this slow. That was one of the coolest scenes I think this movie has had to offer for a bunch of reasons. The basic equation for force is F equals MA, which is force is equal to mass times acceleration. How you make any object fly is you have to go against gravity and you have to win. The acceleration due to gravity on Earth is 9.81 meters per second squared. For Hero and Baymax to fly, you have to add the combined mass of Hero and Baymax and then multiply that combined mass by 9.81 meters per second squared. And once you do that, that's the force that you have to go above to make them fly. When he's saying like thrust, that is the force that's pushing you up against gravity. Like when you see a rocket launch into space, like when NASA does those really cool demonstrations, what you're actually seeing is that the thrust from the rocket is pushing down all the fuel and that's making the rocket go up. Because right now it's producing so much energy that the combined, like it's Newton's second law, like all of the force that's coming out from the thrust is actually so strong that it's going against gravity moving the entire space shuttle up. In the scene right here where their fuel is cut off and you see him actually like get up to a vertex point and then they just drop is exactly what would happen in real life if you just cut off the thrusters. It would be that perfect parabolic motion. One of the biggest critiques I have for this scene is that when Baymax is flying, you can see that there's exhaust coming out of his, like, it, it looks like a giant fat Iron Man, right? And I don't know what he's actually burning for fuel that's creating that exhaust air to come out of him. And whatever that may be, like, where is he storing that fuel? And th th there's just so many things that go into that now because when the space shuttle launches, the I think it's liquid hydrogen that they burn, those actually fall off because if you just leave them on, they could overheat and that could become a hazard. H Hero does have a, like, a sort of like mask or helmet over him, but because he's doing all these like flips and turns and he's constantly changing altitude, somehow or another he would need to have a supply of oxygen so that he doesn't just pass out while he's flying. But I'm really happy that they showed that like when, when Baymax was like thrusting up then he stopped and then just like did a perfect curve downwards. That is exactly what would happen and most movies miss that. Mostly what you see is like when someone like goes thrust and they're like curving up this way they'll stop and just go straight down. That's not what happens. Like you're gonna keep moving up this way then you'll reach a vertex and then from there you're just like curve and move down like this. You're almost never gonna fall, like, you're not gonna come up like that and just fall straight down. The only way that's gonna happen is if you're thrusting directly, like, straight up, and then you stop, then you're gonna come straight down. This movie was fantastic. I mean, not just because the storyline was really fun, but because the engineering scenes and technology were, like, pretty accurate. I mean, I would say, like, 
80% of this movie was spot on perfect when it came to how the technology works and how it would interact in the real world. Which is more than I can say for so many movies, especially animated. I absolutely loved it, like from the storyline all the way to the technology. It was a really fun movie to watch. If there's anything else that you guys want me to see, just put it in the comments below. And thank you guys for watching. Stay fresh, stay golden.